So what are Doppler shift, Doppler spread, and Doppler spectrum? Let's start with Doppler shift. So I've drawn some dots here, and let's assume that the, there's a radio transmitter, and it's moving from this, dist, this location here, moving towards the left. And let's just look at it at the current time, which is this last dot here, and let's just consider that it has just emitted the peak of its sinusoidal electromagnetic wave. So I'm going to draw that peak. It's just been emitted from that location. It's at that location and it's just emitted the peak. Now uh, the dots here, let's consider those to be the locations of that vehicle as it was moving along. The locations where each time uh, there's one of these dots, it's emitting a peak of that sinusoidal radiation. So this is the current time, let's think about that. At a previous time, when it was back here, it emitted a peak, but that was some time ago. So by now that peak has already radiated into a bigger circle from around that point where it was radiated from. Okay, so there's a, there's a point, there's a circle around that point where that peak has now got to because we're looking at the picture at the current time. So we're looking at the picture for the time of the left-hand dot. Okay, now that was for this in the one time slot before or one peak before. Well, what about two peaks before? So previously the vehicle was here and it had a, also uh, emitted a peak of that electromagnetic sinusoidal waveform. And because that was uh, three uh, two time slots ago, it's now traveled an even bigger distance. So there's a circle around that point uh, which is where that peak has now got to. Okay, and of course, uh, we can go back to this point here, and there's a circle around that peak, uh, that point, sorry, that location where the vehicle was when it emitted that uh, peak in the sinusoidal uh, emission uh, of, the, of the electromagnetic wave. Okay, so this is what you're left with at the current time. This is where all those peaks of those waveforms are now. And, and this is because the vehicle has moved towards the left. So I think now that you see this picture, you can clearly see that if we were at a base station uh, receiving the signal from that vehicle, uh, someone talking on a mobile phone in that vehicle, uh, then we would be receiving wave fronts which are very much spaced out much more spaced out than they would have been if the vehicle was stationary. So if the vehicle was stationary, you would have seen them at the carrier frequency of, of the uh, of mobile phone call. Uh, but now you're going to see them at a lower frequency. And likewise, if the base station was in the direction of travel, then these wavefronts would be coming to this base station much closer together with a much smaller wavelength, which means a much higher frequency. So the frequency has been shifted. So if you are in the direction of travel, the frequency is shifted up. Uh, and if you are away from the, in the opposite of the direction of travel, then the frequency is shifted down to a lower frequency. And this is what's called the Doppler shift. Okay, and the amount that it shifts, we, oft, we call often FD, and that equals uh, V divided by lambda. It's related, of course, to the lambda of the, uh, let me put lambda C, the carrier wavelength, and V is the vehicle uh, speed, uh, times cos of theta. Now, theta is the angle that you are related to the direction of travel. So I've just talked about whether you're in exactly in the line of the travel or away from the line of travel, but you could of course be receiving off at any angle and then you wouldn't get the maximum shift uh, either up or down, you would get a, another shift related to that, but not the maximum. Okay, so this is the formula for the shift and, and of course don't forget uh, lambda equals the speed of light divided by the frequency. So this uh, frequency, the Doppler frequency, also we, we sometimes write it in terms of the carrier frequency and the relationship, the ratio of the speed of the vehicle divided by the speed of light, uh, cos theta. Okay, so this is Doppler shift. What about Doppler spread? Well, I think clearly you can see that there's a, a range. You're either going to be shifting up to the maximum or down to the minimum uh, if you are in exactly the line, whether theta equals zero or 180 degrees. And so there's going to be a range over 
over which the, these frequencies get spread. So that's what's the Doppler spread. And of course, the maximum Doppler shift equals either positive or negative of Fc V divided by the speed of light, C. So this C is for carrier, this C is the speed of light. So again, don't get confused there. This C is for the carrier, this C is the speed of light. Uh, and this is when you get the maximum when theta equals zero or when and the negative maximum when theta equals 180. And this gives us the concept of a Doppler spread, which is sometimes used uh, BD. And the reason for this is it's a bandwidth now. So you're seeing a spread in the frequency domain over a bandwidth, which is, of course, two times Fm. Now, this is also can be related to the coherence time of the channel. And so you'll often see that the Doppler spread equals the inverse of the coherence time of the channel. And the coherence time of the channel is a statistical measure of the time over which the channel does not change very much. And so that's related to the speed of the vehicle. Okay, now what about Doppler spectrum then? Uh, and I think one thing that's important to think about this is a practical situation. So, so let's think of uh, being in a vehicle, uh, driving and making a telephone call from that vehicle, and let's say we're driving in, in this direction here. Now let's say that there is a base station tower uh, over in this direction over here. Okay, so let's think, uh, first of all, and we're driving in this direction, so in that direction, the signals that are going from the car and going to the base station tower directly in that direction, let's, immediate, let's just for the moment think that we're driving towards the base station tower, then those ones are going to be uh, in seeing the maximum Doppler shift to a higher frequency, as we've just described. But there will be reflectors behind the vehicle, and those ones, so the emission that comes out of the vehicle and the radio waves that come out of the vehicle and go in this direction will bounce off that building and then will be coming, uh, so let me draw it like this, then will be coming to the base station and this signal, I'll draw that around like this the bounce to show that it's gone to that building and bounced off and coming back and this one, this path here, will be arriving at the base station along a path which is increasing in distance because the vehicle's moving this way. So along this path, and if that building is exactly behind, you're going to be seeing the maximum Doppler shift to the lower frequency. So if you're just considering the ones in the direction of travel, and if the base station's in the direction of channel, travel, some of those waveforms will be coming with a maximum shift to a higher frequency, and some will be coming with a maximum shift to a lower frequency. But of course, in mobile communications, we don't just have one house scattering, we've got lots of scatterers. And Rayleigh fading, of course, is a model for that. And if you want to know more about Rayleigh fading, uh, you can check out the links in the details below this video. But let's assume for a moment that there's another house, and I'll, I'm just going to assume for a moment it's on an angle, maybe a, a factory wall, a long factory wall, for example. I'll just draw it like this and as an arbitrary sort of scatterer. So the, the emission from this vehicle, which goes sideways to the direction of travel and hits that wall, will be coming to the base station with a with a, a longer path that does not vary with uh, with distance with the movement of the car. So let's say for example, um, this let's say this was exactly at 45 degrees, the car's moving along here. So as it moves along, the point of reflection moves up higher so that the actual, if it's exactly 45 degrees, then this path and this path, this one gets longer, this one gets shorter, and that overall path length stays exactly the same. So there will be paths that are coming at the maximum shift up, maximum shift down, and zero shift and all the different shifts in between. And that's what we talk, think about when we think about the Doppler spectrum. So what is a model for the Doppler spectrum? Well, one good model that comes about, and you see often, uh, which is uh, variously called Jake's model or, or Clark's model in, in, in variations, uh, what it assumes is that uh, there's all different scatterers, lots of different scatterers, and that the paths coming into the base station are going to be coming from all uh, different directions with equal uh, equal powers and equal distributions. So this is a it's just a model, but that's uh, this is one that's worth uh, let's just think about just for a few minutes. Okay, so this is. This is a, a model where you've got paths on a circle coming in and the angle of arrival is, is, is equally 
spaced around a circle. What, what that means is around the circle, you're getting equal amounts of each of the different Doppler shifts that are possible uh, due to all of these different scatterers out there in the environment. Okay, so that's an assumption of this model. Uh, another assumption of the model of, I should mention also is that the bandwidth um, is much, much less than the inverse of the delay spread because uh, this model is for um, no ISI, so just flat fading. So this is the flat fading model that we're talking about now for no ISI. So we're assuming that they're coming in equally in, in all different directions and that they've got equal power in all those directions or, or some different models say exactly equal power, some models say uh, a distribution of power is uniform around the circle and that leads to uh, slightly different versions of the results. But I just want to give the intuition in this video to understand these models. Okay, so um, of course, the as we've said before, the change in the path lengths will be the maximum uh, in the direction of travel and the most negative in the opposite direction and other paths will be changing around the circle. So we'd like to know the effect, if they're evenly distributed around the circle, what's the effect of the power on at the, being received by the base station at the receiver? So if they're equally, let's think about this for a moment. Let's think if this direction of travel here is giving us the maximum, uh, then this one here is going to be giving us uh, exactly the opposite, the minimum one here. And these ones come on the side are giving us zero because there's zero change in the path length for these ones uh, under this model. Uh, then uh, the change between maximum change and zero is going to be distributed evenly around this circle. And what that means is, in terms of the effect of the adding up at the signal here, it's going to be related around the circle as a cos function. So uh, what you can do, you can see uh, easily there, if you take the cos function around the circle, there'll be um, these ones here, as you go around here, will be coming in with close to the maximum, and then uh, they'll be getting around to the zero uh, effect, the zero uh, frequency offset. And so that's a, what you can do to see this spectrum, is if you take uh, cos, um, the cos function, if you take the square of it to get the power, so we take the cos function, we take the square of it to get the power, and if we take the histogram of that, then you will get a spectrum that looks like this. And this spectrum is the one that there's, uh, you'll find formulas for this under these various different assumptions I mentioned before. Uh, I'm not going to give all the formulas here, but this is uh, the maximum, this is the minimum, and this is the shape, it's not, it's a bit more um, down here and a bit flatter across the bottom than maybe I've drawn uh, here. Uh, you can do that yourself, it's a simple thing in MATLAB, just take the cos function, take the square of, square, uh, take, evaluate the, or plot the cos function, uh, take the square of every single element, and then uh, do the histogram, and you'll get this function here. And so this is in the frequency domain, and this is what's called the Doppler spectrum. It's under this model, and it is a model for mobile communications under the practical scenarios of all these different scatterers that I've talked about before. Uh, and uh, as I say, uh, the maximum, or we've described the maximum here. So this is what we get for the Doppler spectrum. So hopefully this has explained the shift, the spread, and the spectrum, and the relationship of all of those. And like I say, if you want an exact formula for this spectrum, you'll find it in, in many textbooks, uh, and I'm sure online. So if this video has helped you to understand these concepts, uh, please give it a thumbs up, um, like it, it helps others to find the video. Um, subscribe to the channel for more videos, and check out in the notes below, there's a web page link where you'll find a complete list of, categorized list of all the videos that are on the channel.